everybody. It's uh, Christmas Eve here in the UK and I'm just sat here editing our final uh, video of the year. This one's all about the uh, Josephine's bowsprit net. Uh, this, this, as I say, will be the last video of the year. And uh, this Christmas is a bit of a special one really for uh, Randy and I because it's uh, going to be the last one here in Gloucester. It's three and a half years since we began this project here in Gloucester and uh, we are pretty much finished. Uh, the, well, I mean, we've got lots of little jobs to do, and uh, which we'll, we'll be doing over the course of the next couple of months, but w we are more or less finished. We know that we are going to be setting sail in the spring. So to all of you that have tuned in during the course of the year, I want to send a heartfelt thank you. And especially to the, all of those of you who've reached out to us. I mean, it really does matter. So a big thanks for that. Um, you'll know what it's cost us in blood, sweat and tears uh, to get this far. But we have ended up with a boat that we're, we're really, really proud of. So thank you all. And um, here's wishing you a really Merry Christmas. Cheers. Uh, so let me just introduce you what I have done so far. What I'm doing is uh, creating all the bolt ropes. So there's one in, right down the centre that's attached to a strop which I put round there because I didn't have an eye to put it onto. And then there's the two outer ones that will attach, finally be bound to the whisker stays. So the idea is to set them up where they need to be so that it will end up you know, the net will cover the area I need it to cover and be well supported by the bolt ropes. Um, carefully mark exactly the shape it's going to be, then take it all down and actually infill it with the mesh, the actual net itself. Which... So here we are at the first stages of laying out our guidelines. This is the shape that I want to end up with. While it was on the boat, I tied these, this cordage to it to maintain its shape. Step two uh, is to take a straight edge and uh, I've placed that alongside the rope and then I chalked the line. So this has already been done. I'll make up the uh, eye splices at this end and then anchor them so that when I present it to the boat, I'll fasten it at the bow sprit, pull it all tight backwards and then I'll be able to see precisely where I need to make my eye splices so that the whole net is nice and tight. That's my thinking, that's the way I'm going to approach this. Uh... for another little update on the bowsprit net. I did some trial pieces. So that's the mesh and that's the mesh size that I'm going for. It's, I've uh, worked on the basis of four and a half inches between the centers of the, of the mesh, the rope. Um, and those are the knots I'm doing. So I've, uh, I measured obviously the rope before I did the knot and then after the knot. So by that means I could tell how much rope was being used in the knot. <clears throat> and then I can just, now that I've got it mapped out like this, I can add up the number of knots that are going to be, and then I can make sure that I cut the length of rope to the right length, so adding in the knots. And I've found a means of tensioning them. 
so that I can work on my own. I've uh, I put that beam in there, look, which I can tie to, and then I can pull them tight. And so I'm gonna work my way down through the mesh. Each time I put a new cross piece in, I re-tighten this using that mechanism I've got going there, mark where the mesh is gonna be, loosen it off, put the line in, and then do the second one. Tension it up again, mark where it's got to be, um, thread and knot the mesh, and then um, step by step by step work my way down. The bit where it's blue has been left for the anchor, uh, the anchor on the roller. As it goes forward to deploy, it extends quite a long way before it drops down, so you need that amount of space. The longitudinal lengths of the mesh are going to go in first, and then tie the knots using the horizontal ones. It will become apparent once I get started. The next thing to do is to work out how much rope we need for the next mesh by measuring the distance across. 1.55, so we'll call it 1.6 for argument's sake. Uh, that's our starting line. We'll add to that 600 mil for the uh, splices, but we also now need to take into consideration the knots. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, 13. That's 13 knots across. 1.6 metres across, uh, plus 600 for the splices, that's 300 each. And then we need, it's 150 mil, remember, for each knot, and there's 13 of them. And we've already done the maths on that for the last time, so we know that's 1950. And that comes to 1221, 4.150, so we'll call that 4.2 metres. Better to have a little bit too much than too little. If we get all the way across and we've already spliced one end and done all the knots, it's a real fag if we run out of uh, rope. So much as we don't want to waste it, nor do we want to be silly about it. So let's... It's, uh, I think it's the 8th of December and I've brought you down into the barge to have a look at the ongoing progress with our bowsprit net. 
As far as the, uh, the sort of technique of it is concerned, the splices, I'm using two different types of splice. Um, here you've got a side splice, so the mesh rope comes into it at 90 degrees and then the mesh rope is spliced into the bolt rope. And I'll film actually doing the splice itself in a minute, in fact, I'm going to do it later today. So that's one type of splice. The other one, in Ashley's book, it actually is referred to also as a side splice, wrapped round and through the bolt rope first before you start back splicing, but effectively it is really just a back splice. Um, these were the original test pieces. That was the original ropes that I were, was going to use for the bolt ropes. It's um, called Navy Flex. It's not a very nice rope, but it's cheap. And I thought I could get away using it as bolt rope, but then when it dried out, because it was wet when I first looked at it, when it dried out, it, I could see it was all crumbly and rotting. So that went and we chose a different one. Now that rope there is actually the same rope, but you can see the difference. That's the rotted piece. This was some rope that uh, Nielsen's had in their store. Um, I don't think they use it very much, but they, they had it from a job they've done before. So being inexpensive, I decided to do the bolt rope in that and then the mesh itself in this nice polyester rope, which I'd used to do the rattlings. So that's worked out quite nice. The reason I did this test was to see how much, putting the splicing in, how much it reduced the length of the rope so that I cut the right lengths of rope here. So here's, here was the experiment for the mesh. First of all, to see whether I like the actual size of the mesh at four or five, five inches. And uh, secondly, to find out how much rope are not needed. And in using this 12 mil polyester rope, each knot takes up 150 mil, so it's quite considerable. Uh, there's more rope in the mesh because of the knots than there are because of the actual size and diameter of the, um, of the net itself. Here you see the mesh knot. First, the rope we're going to tie the knot in is threaded through and under one strand of the perpendicular mesh rope. Next, establish the correct mesh size by measuring between the centres of the mesh ropes. Then, tie the knot and snug it up as tight as you can. It's actually a very simple knot. Here it is in slow motion. A couple of points to note. First, this simple knot uses far less rope and is much less bulky than the alternative and more complicated square knot very often seen in the making of cargo nets. And secondly, this knot looks different front and back, so decide which look you want for your net before you start making it. The side splice. Begin by unwinding the three strands of your rope back to the point where you want the splice to begin. Working in the direction of the rope's lay, identify a left, middle and right strand. Pass the middle of your three mesh rope strands under one strand of the side rope. That's now the centre point of your side splice. Next, pass the left of your mesh rope strands through two of the side rope strands. In other words, the one you've just threaded and the one to the left of it. Now pass the right mesh rope strand through two strands of the side rope. This time, the middle one and the one to the right of it. Snug everything up neatly. Now pass each of the center and right mesh strands over one and under one of the side rope strands both mesh strands going to the right of centre. Next, pass each of the same two strands over one and under two. Okay, 
That side is now complete. Let's turn our attention to the left of centre. Pass the left mesh rope strand over one and under one of the side rope strands. To do this, the mesh strand has to be reversed back on itself so that it splices against the lay of the side rope in the natural splicing fashion. Next, divide this left mesh strand and pass one half of it over one and under one. And the other half over one and under two. Finally, pass each of the halves over one and under one. All that now remains is to cut off and tidy the loose ends. Et voila! There you go. One nice side splice. So this is going to be a back slice into that corner there. direction. I'm going to want it tucked up as tightly as I can to the bolt rope so I can pick the two strands look that are alongside it and thread the first of my three strands through. The next will be the middle one, that's that one there. So I pick the middle one. And that just leaves the one to the right this one and that's got to go through two again so that's the middle one and the right mesh that goes through there and the right hand side goes back over the top and back through itself and that's through there so the left hand side and goes underneath the middle strand and then the middle one, that's going to go down under around the other way. So I'm going to have to turn the rope over. It's the only one that hasn't been used so far. So you've got the three on three look, one between each strand. So there's my three pieces look. So this one is going to go over that one and under that, under that one in the usual way. It goes over there turn the rope towards me look and then you get that nice little pool in there you know that's where your next one's going through there so put that one to one side and it goes through there if I turn it over last remaining two two strands without anything through them are these so that one's got to come over that one and underneath that one so that goes through there then we go back to our three and three gearing these ends, as I've said before, are perfect size for our uh, baggy wrinkles. So they've got a little growing collection which Randy will strip down and make into baggy wrinkles. And then once it's stretched, they all do line up where they're supposed to look. Finished. Well, finished making it. Uh, the next stage is to fit it. Brenda's coming over in a minute and uh, she's going to help me carry it over to the boat. And we've only got a couple of hours before dark, but it would be quite nice to uh, hang it on there, sort of generally. I have
it is blowing a hooli out of here. So we'll see how effective they are. <clears throat> and it's starting to rain as well. But I just wanted to show you the uh, the net as it now is. I was hoping actually to have had this finished um, ready for this particular video. And I've waited all week, but the winds are blowing and blowing and blowing. They're going to continue blowing. You can see I've just loosely tied them up there at the corner. Uh, there's going to be new splices in the ends of those ropes. They won't be just tied like that, so it'll all be neatly spliced in. And uh, to fill this, keep this tension here, and to fill this gap, I'm going to put a couple of eye bolts through the shear plank, which this can be then lashed back to on lanyards. So that, there you go, it looks uh, pretty good. There's the other side. Same thing here. We'll put a couple of um, eye bolts on so that this can be pulled back in towards the boat uh, to give it extra support. It'll support it along its length. Same thing there. They've got to be spliced in, so they'll be spliced. Uh, and the other thing is the bolt rope has not been lashed to the uh, whisker stay. It's just loosely tied on at the moment. Uh, but you can see it's turned out pretty good. I'll give you a view from outside.